Hi people, it's Sarkovist here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to optimize World of Warcraft for your MacBook Pro. In this video, I'm going to be focusing on dedicated GPU MacBooks, more specifically the 16-inch MacBook Pro, which is the only MacBook Pro you can buy at the moment from Apple that has a dedicated GPU. Although you can indeed play World of Warcraft going all the way down to the lowest spec MacBook Air, you will have to heavily compromise on the settings and even then there's no guarantee of a good frame rate. So in this video, I am taking the presumption that you have a dedicated GPU. If you don't, then still follow my logic, but perhaps take the settings down by about three options per, and you should be able to have at least a playable experience. But for here, we're going to be focusing on the 16-inch MacBook Pro using the non-Vega AMD Radeon. So this is the second tier model, but whether you're getting the baseline or the second tier, this should more or less apply because there isn't a massive difference in terms of GPU power between them, to be honest, guys. So let's start off with the settings that I believe are optimal. So resolution scale, it would be madness in my opinion, to try and run this at 100% of the full resolution as it's very high on this MacBook. So what I decided to do was use the logic of, well, I am very happy with 1080p as a gaming resolution. So I tried to get it as close to 1080p as I could without harming the frame rate, but also didn't want to go beneath it. And for me, that was 56% of resolution scale. The game still looks plenty sharp and the awesome thing about resolution scale is that it doesn't actually affect the clarity of user interface elements, things like you know your quest text and your menu bar, it only affects the actual 3D graphics. So it's something I can turn down without seeing the whole thing become blurry. But having this at 56% it does not look blurry in my opinion look it's still above 1080p and on a 16 inch screen that's not too bad at all on the anti-aliasing side i did not see many jaggies at all so i left it at none and see no reason to put anti-aliasing on at all in fact if you go for fxaa i feel as if it can make the game look blurrier than it needs to be without really adding much to it on vertical sync, especially on a laptop, I would supremely recommend this. Uh, if you don't use vertical sync, then it won't synchronize to the refresh rate of your monitor, or in this case, the laptop screen, which is 60 hertz. So that means that if you exceed 60 frames per second, you're basically just burning power for no reason because you won't see the difference between 60 frames per second and 1,000 frames per second because your monitor can only actually display 60. And although there is also a frame rate limiter which can do something similar, the vertical sync tool here makes it far more fluid and consistent. So I would absolutely 100% recommend enabling vSync. The only reason not to actually is if you are using a lower end device and if you're not hitting 60 frequently, it can be an idea to disable it because you get a very slight frame rate boost. But if you're using a dedicated GPU, my recommendation is strongly to enable vSync to save on power usage, but also it's just redundant to go any higher than what your monitor can actually do, right? Or in this case, the laptop screen. So on to the graphics quality. So texture resolution is a no brainer to be high. Texture resolution is an interesting one. It's either something your laptop can do or it can't. And I find that you can enable this in the highest setting, even on a MacBook Pro 13 inch, and it really has no bearing on frame rate. So this is definitely something to set it to high without thinking about it. Same thing goes for an isotropic filtering to change it to 16 times, barely any impact on frame rate. Projected textures, I feel as if the game suffers mechanically. If you don't enable it, this is like um, logos or markers being set on the floor. So imagine, for example, you're a mage and you want to cast Blizzard. That little green thing on the ground, that's a projected texture. And without it, it can make the game actually harder to play. So I feel as if projected textures is a mandatory choice, no matter what device you're on. So for the environment, six for me felt like the ultimate balance i could probably make it a little bit higher but six to me made the game look nice there's plenty of grass the environment doesn't pop in uh, too obviously especially if i'm just walking across the ground and view distance this is really like a personal preference thing but for me six is the sweet spot on this particular screen i really don't take it higher than eight even on my uh, windows machine 
Shadow quality, now I have it set to high and in my testing high is pretty much okay but if you want to get a lot of frames change this to low and you will see your frame rate just jump up massively. Shadow quality has a massive impact on frame rate in most scenarios so it's something that if you want to get some extra frames uh, put it to low. If you're using any non-dedicated GPU machine for example put it to low and you'll have a better time of it but I have found that on the 16 inch devices high is actually something you can get away with and it does make the game look nicer. Liquid detail, honestly, anything above low is fine. There's a big difference between fair and low. So I'm putting good here, and good seems to be a nice sweet spot. Sun shafts, well, they only occur in certain situations. I think that's something you can quite safely put to high. Particle density, I really like this being at high because say you're a mage and you have those glorious fireballs of all the sparks coming off them. I think that adds a lot to the overall look of the class. Um... And to take away from it seems like the class is less impressive. But the downside is if you walk into an area with a lot of smoke, or as it's known technically alpha effects, it can tank the frame rate. So if you want ultra consistent frames, maybe bring it back to low. But if you're a spellcaster like me and you love those flashy spell effects, I would set it to high. SSAO or Screen Space Ambient Occlusion. In a nutshell, these are the crevices in the world and it shows shading effects. This adds a hell of a lot, in my opinion, to the overall look of the game. It makes it look current gen. In fact, I think it's something they added in Mr. Pandora and around things like torches where you have that emanation of light. I think it does a lot for the experience, but very similar to shadow quality, it's something you can drop and get a lot of extra frames. So if you just want a clean looking game, then it's something you can drop down, I think be pretty happy with, but good is what I'm setting it as here. Depth effects, to be honest guys, I really can't see what this is doing. I have it as high, but I could probably drop it lower. And if I was looking to get some more frames, I would. Uh, there's not a lot I can say here. Outline mode just puts outlines around uh, characters enemies as you target them that's more of a do you want it or not and less about optimizing the game so that is what for the dedicated gpu machines i think is a great setup and to prove this i'm going to be doing something of a makeshift benchmark here where i'm going to be using flight masters to soar over the world which is constantly rendering new environment detail and giving you a wide view and it's a really great way of testing have you got your settings right and you want to make sure you're doing this in modern settings things like the battle for azeroth or legion environments because if you go back to the old school uh, classic world of warcraft environments they're quite simplistic so even if you have these settings it won't necessarily tax your machine so i think the best way to make sure you've got that really uh, consistent frame rate is to push the machine and go to the newer continents fly over them and there's actually quite a handy frame rate tool unfortunately because I'm trying to shoot this without doing any kind of outside impact to the frame rate in other words screen recording I'm doing this in a slightly uh, caveman like way but you might just be able to make out the frame rate counter I have on the screen and for the most part, with the settings I have just shown you, you get a pretty consistent 60 FPS. There are a few places it can dip slightly, but for the most part, I found it to be very consistent. And if you can get the most taxing areas of the game to run a consistent 60 FPS, well, that means that the rest of the game is pretty much going to take care of itself. Like I said at the beginning though, when it comes to things like raiding, where you've got lots of crazy effects on screens and loads of players in one place, it becomes so unpredictable that the best thing I can recommend across the board is turning up your resolution a bit, but turning down as many graphical settings as you're happy with, especially particle density, because although, I, as I said, I love particle density, in a raid setting where you have many, many players all firing off spells, the impact of frame rate is absolutely massive. So this has been more about optimizing for the open world to get you the best looking Azeroth and the best running Azeroth you can get. I hope this has been useful. Uh, maybe it's helping you decide if you want to get a new 16-inch MacBook Pro because in some ways it's been a little bit of a benchmark. But if you have one, maybe this will help you tune and optimize your experience. And of course, this has been with a preference for me to 60 FPS. But obviously, if you're happy with 30 FPS or 
lower even you can jack the settings up higher i just think the game looks at its best at a clean 60 fps with vertical sync enabled so as always people thanks very much for watching and see you next time